السلام علیکم مولانا وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ تھینک یو فار اولویز گیونگ اس دا رائٹ گائیڈنس پلیز ہیلپ اس انڈرسٹینڈ دا کانسیپٹ آف کارمک کوڈس بٹوین پیپل اور بٹوین پیپل ٹو پلیسز ان سوفیزم تھینک یو سعید وعلیکم السلام دا کارمک کوڈس بٹوین پیپل ان پلیسز آئی نیڈ ا کلیریفیکیشن آن دیٹ آف دا ورڈ karma is uh, in reference to like do we have like an ancient connection to people and places in life or that I'm, I'm not very clear on that. You can email help me <laughs> at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah. Okay. Yeah we have familiarity with people and and uh, and and places and, and that's a, a deep reality that we, we, we have an existence before we came onto this earth. We have uh, the world of light and the world of souls, our existence in that reality and we know each other from that reality and we come across people on this earth with a sense of familiarity because like tribes that were together at one time. And all of a sudden you feel that, I know this person, I have a sense of familiarity with this person. In most cases that's correct, that that was from the world of light and the existence in the world of light and all that is happening in that world of light. And even to the extent in this world when we want to reach towards our reality and reach to the association of the shaykhs, that association can never take place if it didn't take place already in the world of light. For you to be hearing this broadcast and to be watching these videos means that you are with that shaykh in that world of light, that there's no way to come across them and to be with them, to be connecting and feeling a connection towards them if you were not in their associations in the world of light. So alhamdulillah that the world of light that association has to come first and then Allah may grant the bodies to come together or to come to, to witness a reality or a teaching or an understanding inshaAllah. Dear Shaykh, does time exist without life? Walaykum as salaam wa does time exist without life? I don't understand that. That uh, time and life are two different understandings. That for us to understand the, the world of light has no time, time is a constant. Uh, the, the world of light has no time that light is a, is a constant. Time is only a creation that exists upon this earth and its movement is based on this earth. What would be the time and our time of life and speed of life if it was on Jupiter and the sun was going its rotation every day or every two minutes the sun would rotate or the moon rotates three times every day. Depending upon its rotation, its movement, what would time be like on other planets? We only understand time based on this planet. But the world of light is free from that reality. Once we leave the confine of the earth, moon and sun, when we enter into the world of light that Allah has no time and the world of light is a no timeless reality. What happens for that reality? is then what the understandings of Malakut are trying to teach the people of earth. When the heavenly people come to earth to teach, they're trying to teach of a timeless dimension and that you have to leave your timed dimension, you are a time creature, everything based on I got to know and my physicality. If you efface yourself and you enter a state of death before death in which I'm nothing, not I'm worthless. I go to email somebody said, I'm worthless. No, no your worth is immense because Allah created you with love. 
this is about you negating your nafs that I, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I, I don't want to think myself so big and my nafs to think I'm important. I took a way in which to negate myself, negate myself. What happens is my soul starts to come and I'm operating more from my soul. This is now timeless. So time is me when I die and my Oh, I want to know everything what's happening tomorrow, what's going to the next week, what's going to happen this week, what's going to happen for my future, what's going to happen for my retirement. When the servant dies from that dimension he becomes timeless because now he's operating more from his soul when there is no time for him. When he meditates he goes backwards, he goes forwards, he goes in any direction Allah wants to dress that servant from. So then they become of a timeless reality and they're more entering in towards malakut. Now above that is timelessness where even that state of dying in the dimension of the world of light and to return back into the state of origin and uh, a reality deep within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So time, timeless. And then above that timelessness in which they've annihilated even into the world of light and they go back into the origin of the reality into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So everything is relevant to leaving this dunya understanding. Why the understanding of Qur'an from timed people is completely different from timeless people. And that's where the problem lies and that's why awliya are, are misunderstood and they said that you're not a wali until a thousand scholars have attacked you. Because the 99% of all scholars are timed creatures. They live on the earth and all they're concerned about the earth and all they want to know about Qur'an teaching them about their earthly life. If they take the path of taskiyah and annihilation and that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, Allah begins to open a timeless reality which was what? That Prophet the hadith of Jabbar, he told Sayyidina Jabbar that, I was a prophet, I am a prophet before Adam was between clay and water, that's timeless. That before this dimension of Adam came onto this earth. In my light I was Rasulat, I have a Rasul, I'm the Prophet of Allah in the heavens. In the heavens, in the world of light Prophet is the ancient messenger of Allah Adam is only a creation that came onto earth and everybody wants just the earth understanding and it's not even like a drop and it's less than kindergarten and it has no value because the earth dimension is, is perishing. If you spend all your life just trying to understand about your earth dimension and it's only 60, 70, 80 years you wasted your life. But if you learn about the dimension in which Prophet described, I was, I am a Rasul before Adam was between clay and water. What is that the understanding of Rasulullah in the world of light? And that enters when the servant leaves their physical form a mawt a qabl al mawt. As a result they're, they're communicating with their soul, they move with their soul, they meditate with their soul and as a result of their soul is connecting with the soul of Qur'an, the lights of Qur'an that every letter has a light of reality. It's not something created by Allah and there's an angel and a qadam, a servant for every letter of Holy Qur'an, there's an angel attached to that letter and is that angel sending its light into the heart of that servant to understand its reality and above every darajat and knower there's even more knowers which can never be limited or they only understood the, the printed text. And SubhanAllah even just from the printed text of Holy Qur'an how many millions of books have been written. Imagine then the world of light how many billions and trillions of understandings must be flowing from that. So time is, is of the lowest level, the servant should reach to a place of timeless.
where they move and operate with their soul and above that timelessness inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Thank you for everything. I have a question, is it okay to learn about energy using human design? Walaykum As Salaam, is, there, is it okay to, to learn about energy using human design? Is that a, a new philosophy, a website? I don't understand these things. Where, where do you guys come up with this? Human design like the human body? I feel like somebody, like I asked my dad something a long time ago, he was like, didn't know what a mobile phone was a long time ago, that's like, what is this maybe new website that I don't understand or the human design. I just described to you the Allah's human design, I don't know if it's a unique website but using this human design and understanding energy and anything you want to study. Study from this ocean of teachings. You're asking a teacher, is it okay to study something else? No. Otherwise, why are we a teacher? You're asking a shaykh, is it okay to go to another shaykh? No. Why are you asking a shaykh to do that? So, the shaykh is here teaching these realities. Why would you want to sit somewhere else to learn something of a far lesser understanding? And it won't even be on your test or on your curriculum with this shaykh. If you're watching this shaykh and meditating and understanding the energy and the realities of this shaykh, your testing is going to come from this shaykh. So you can't study at a different university and then take your test at another university. Because what did you learn of math and the other one is teaching you something else, a different way of doing something, has a different course schedule, different set of rules on what he's trying to get. So Allah all the shaykhs that Allah is putting upon the earth, they have a course schedule. They teach what they have to teach for the audience that Allah has destined for them. So the ones who want to reach to that reality, they follow them, they get their taweez from them, they take their courses from them, they're not distracted left and right. And many distractions come because of the way the shaykhs talk and they say they're nothing, they're nothing, they're nothing then they say, okay well I'll just go take some courses here, some courses there because they don't understand the adab of tariqah. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa May Allah bless, May Allah bless you, you eternally. Um, how to stop thinking that I am something when speaking to others, i.e. explaining something to someone and remember that I'm nothing. How to remember I'm nothing while I'm talking to others, trying to explain things. Yeah, it's a way of life in which to, to believe that uh, I'm nothing and that's why we, we learn that we keep our wudu, we do our energy practices, we have our taweez. We've done everything that we practice, I practice all my madad and I keep making my madad, keep making my connection before I ever talk to anyone. So that's why the first step in our way is silence, it's never to talk. That I took a, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq gave a reality that put a rock in your mouth for seven years. So it means until I keep a path of silence in which I silence myself to know myself do my practices, make my connection, make my connection. Once I'm grounded and understood my connection and my relationship with the shaykh, understood my sicknesses and my faults, I, le I left my amara and I got cooked in shawarma and in lawama I didn't get deceived by the devil to think that I'm something. Because everybody when they get mad that's why those talks were very important about the nafs that Lawama is teaching us about anger. Why does somebody get angry and get offended by people? Because they think that they have achieved something and they, they were not recognized for what they achieved. Well that's pride and arrogance and that's exactly what Allah wants to be destroyed and that's the great battle of a servant being lifted up that shaitan will come to them. That you're feeling good, your energies are good, you understand these realities, all these mashallah realities that nobody has ever heard of, 
Now you want to tell people and, and make yourself to be you know recognized by people, shaitan will then come to you and then start creating an immense sense of anger and frustration and why are people disrespecting me, why are all these difficulties happening to me, don't they know that I'm, I'm receiving these knowledges and these understandings. So at this level it's immensely important to remain silent and to take a path of silence in which we fight and struggle ourselves and understand the true nature of energy. That's why we talked about last night that if we don't have all of these energy practices and every time shaitan comes and casts himself upon the person they get angry, they get into a battle, they heat up and then they begin to curse somebody then they will never grow from that reality and out of that difficulty. So our greatest battle is against ourself and this is what Prophet described Jihad al-Akbar in which to put a ruqh in our mouth, understand now I'm going to go through an energy field and when I come to Islam every devil is going to be angry. They're not welcoming you into paradise and saying congratulations on your acceptance of Islam and here's a trophy for you and here's a, a black belt and a, an award for us. That they're very angry that you've accepted Islam because you were under their dominion and they had a leash upon that insan. So as soon as they accept Islam they've accepted now to fight their devils. And as soon as they struggle with themselves, come against these bad desires, bad characteristics and to remain upright and happy in their, in their demeanor and then using every tool that the shaykhs are giving to them that they keep their wudu, they keep salat al-wudu, they do their zikr, they do their, their daily awrad, they learn how to meditate to bring more energy around themselves. Wa kunu ma sadiqeen wa Allah said, have a taqwa and keep the company of, uh, of, uh, of uh, truthful servants. How do you keep the company of truthful servants? By meditating and asking, oh truthful servants, my shaykhs please keep my company as Allah ordered. And so when we do that and keep the company of these energies and these pious souls that becomes our most important, most important so that I controlled all these bad characteristics. Later when I have that control then I begin to teach people, talk to people about the reality and uh, inshaAllah not have a bad experience in which I begin to yell and scream and they say, oh is this what your shaykh teaching you? And then it becomes the reverse of what is trying to be accomplished. <coughs> Sayyidi, Sayyidi, Sayyidi. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Wa Alaikum Wa Alaikum Wa Alaikum What should we do to break the cycle in which we are bipolar, doing spiritual practices for a while and going back to sins and repetitive bad behavior and the cycle keeps repeating? Wa Alaikum Wa What do you do about like a bipolar characteristic of, of doing good and then doing bad, doing good and then doing bad? Thumma ammanu, thumma kafaru. That's again all of these practices that the energy practices, the awrad practices, try to keep the daily awrad, try to keep the salawats, anything that you can do for excessive positive energy so that to fight that difficulty, give your sadaqah, give charity that there everything we do has an energy. One, I do my practices, so I say, I do my practice, I put my taweez, I did my zikrs, I, I did my salawats, I'm always keeping in my wudu. Then everything else that Prophet brought for us, brought for us, what do you eat? Is, is what you're eating giving you this type of crazy energies? You know these fast food, these places, are they in wudu that they feed food? Try to eat from your home, try to do your du'a on, on everything that you eat. If you're having these desires, this pornographic desires, these uh, bad desires, bad energies, these are all around. These are the people who are in junub and they're cooking your food and, and they're angry at their homes, they're angry, they're, they're watching all sorts of bad and horrific and haram things and then they're doing and making a kebab for you and so everyone putting their everything into a whole mixture of what people are eating. So what do you eat? And the du'as that you make upon that food, try to eat from your own sources so that you're making your du'a, what do you drink? And that energy is it coming into the body and every, everything has to be reviewed in our lives. Where we go and how often do we go, what type of energies are we picking up? 
And then I try to build myself, protect myself, make from the food that I've made, I've made du'a upon it, drink from everything and every time I'm about to eat and drink I make my du'a and asking for the madad of my shaykhs to be on everything. All of that so that whatever comes inside of me, around me and inside of me is all to be blessed and to be protected inshaAllah so that less and less. And how I earn my money, where did I earn it from, what, what type of work did I do to get it, did it come loaded with all sorts of difficulties and sins and that's why charity is zaki, is zakah it means cleansing. Am I cleansing as a result of what this is coming with all this bacteria and badness? By giving in charity it cleanses and makes halal what I made and what I earned. If I just earn it and I just spend it, it's coming with all of its difficulties. But if I'm earning good and Allah is sending and from that I'm supporting and doing all these good things, Allah sends more. So alhamdulillah there's a whole system that Prophet brought for us for immense success, immense protection and immense blessings inshaAllah. InshaAllah. The rest we good? Help me. The rest are for help me. Help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah. Illa shraf al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa alihi sahbihi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqatana shbandiyatul aliyya wa sayyidu wa saddatina wa siddiqina al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.